Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Well today we're talking about what happens with all of that seed uh, that the, you see the birds picking up at your bird feeders and all those insects that you see them snatching out of the air and acorns they're picking up and all and they, basically what happens from the time they swallow it to well you know it comes out the other end on our car hoods and different places so uh, but we're going to talk about the bird digestive system which is really unique and really uh, very varied and so we're going to talk about how it works and then I'm going to give you some examples of some really unique uh, the digestive uh, systems in birds. So uh, the first thing we're going to go over is just uh, the basic anatomy of the uh, an, of a bird, the the internal workings of a bird. Like you and I, they have an esophagus. So they uh, obviously when they swell thing is swallow things, then it goes down in there. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit different. Most birds, and really all birds, but much more developed in, in some birds than others, they have what is known as a crop or a crawl uh, in their throat, and that is storage. That is basically where when they're where they're taking in food, um, they have a place to, to store it, and that way they can keep picking up more seed and more seed, and or and so that it can get quite enlarged, things like that. So that that's the initial part of the the system, and you can see that illustrated on the the drawing here. And then it uh, passes through this very little digestive goes on. It's really just storage, it's, with some exception. I'll talk about that, but. When the the seed does finally, or the insects, they, they whatever they've stored in there, the first next place it goes to is the stomach. And in a bird that has a two chamber stomach, they had their first part of their stomach is like you and I's, a mammals. It's the chemical stomach, and it is where uh, enzymes will start to break down the food. But the second part of the digestive tract is to me the fa the fascinating part of it is known as the gizzard. So the food goes that it, it's gotten uh, the chemical treatment has goes into what's known as the gizzard. Well, the gizzards were really unique for birds, and that it is uh, in, in comparison to us. I, you know, I did a video a while back on do birds have teeth? Well, no, they don't have teeth. They used to. They but they've evolved past that. They have the specialized bills. Now some those bills are good for cracking seed or or um, they drinking nectar or or uh, picking up insects, what they specialize there. But, you know, you and I, molars, the big teeth in the back that grinds our food, well, basically that's the function of the gizzard. So this seed and other things go into the gizzard, and it is a very muscular, tough-walled structure that grinds up the, the hard stuff. And, yes, it, 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 the birds, some birds do eat dirt. <laughs> They'll grit. They pick up little pieces of dirt. Uh, and that it's, it goes to the, the gizzard and helps with the grinding of the seed to get it more in the condition that it can be absorbed by the system, more chemical treatment. So, and then, of course, it passes through the intestines and out through the cloaca. So that's the basics of it. Um, you know, it's funny because birds like, well, ground feeding birds especially, like quail, uh, and dove, things like that. They have usually have very big crawls or gizzards, and, and because they're picking when they when they have the opportunity, they get into like quail biologists on Fort Bragg. I used to have to remove the crops from uh, hunters kill. They brought them into the check station. We would take all the crops and the data, and then I would have to go through and analyze what they've been eating. And that was the way you needed to do it because while it's in the crop, it's not breaking down. So we you know, could dump the seed and identify the seeds that they were eating. Um, and that was part of the food study on Bob White Quail. Well, we have uh, we had one quail brought in one day that had seven acorns in its crop. Now, I mean, that bird's not very big, and these were smaller acorns, obviously, but it was just packed. It was stretched to the max, so they can hold a lot of seed. Another bird that 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 is really important, crops are really important to, are raptors. Uh, I, I, you have birds of prey, turkey vultures, and hawks and eagles, but not owls. We're going to talk about them in a minute. But these guys, whenever they have a kill... They have to be able to eat as much as they can, and then they have to fill their crop with uh, the, what the food availability because they don't know when the next one's coming. So they can't just pick a seed and fly over and know they're going to get another seed and going to get another seed. For birds like this, that crop's important to store 
food and it really starts the digestive process just a little bit before it goes on to the stomach. Now, one really cool exception about the crop are the doves and the pigeons. And if you've heard of uh, pigeon milk or crop milk, whenever the dove are nesting and they're, the young are close to hatching, they start uh, and, and it's a fascinating, and it's enzymes, it actually secretes in the crop that helps to start to break down the seeds a little bit, and it creates a milk, and that they regurgitate uh, and back into the, the baby's throats. And so, but it, after the babies are gone, that actually, the structure actually adjusts back to normal. Uh, when, and so it's when they're nesting and when they're not nesting. It's fascinating, and, and, and birds are just so cool. Well, we said, how about owls? Because owls are birds of prey. Well, the turkey vultures and the hawks and, and, and eagles uh, is important for the crop. But the owl system is quite a bit different. They swallow their food whole. So, you know, they, they'll eat insects and cicadas and different things. But, they, you know, mainly they eat small birds and small mammals. The owl has to be able to swallow that mouse whole. And it goes down to the, the chemical stomach. And owl's uh, stomach uh, enzymes and, and acids are not very strong, but they do break down what they can. So the tissue, the meat, and uh, the organs, things like that are all broken down by the owl. And then the, what's left moves into the gizzard, and the gizzard can't grind up and it can't digest bones and teeth and uh, the, the very hard structure. So in the gizzard, what happens is all that gets bound together and, 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 and it becomes a pellet. And the pellet is then regurgitated by the owl. And it, it's very fascinating. We, we do in the nature center world for years and we used to uh, buy owl pellets uh, from a company. Uh, and they, of course, you have to be careful and they, they would microwave and make sure there's nothing uh, bad in there. But they, you, the kids would, we would take apart the owl pellets. And it's crazy because you're finding, uh, you know, skulls and rib bones and leg bones and things like that. And then it, and some feathers, maybe it depends on what the owl ate. And it's cool because we could actually, the kids could actually reassemble a, a, the mouse skeleton. It was really, and, and it's awesome. So I remember we had one owl pellet at Martha Lafitte that was uh, collected by a professor at William Jewell at an area that had, oh God, what was it? 13 least shrew skulls and least shrews are really tiny, but that obviously that owl had found a little nest and had eaten like uh, that many of them. And, and cool. They were all, all that they could count the skulls in there because they didn't digest them. So owls have a different system like that. Well, most of our insect eating birds, they don't have a real the need for the, uh, the gizzard because they're in the, the chemicals in their stomach break down the keratin and the parts of the, the insect really efficiently. So uh, that's, that's an example of a bird that doesn't it really need a, a well-developed gizzard. Uh, and then one, another famous one out there is, of course, the cedar waxwings. Uh, if you know the story of cedar waxwings, you know, they eat tons of berries. And they're known to eat fermented berries and actually get intoxicated. Yes, it, it is true. Uh, but their system, they're one of the trees and shrubs and uh, plants best friends because they're in their digestive tracts are really inefficient so they have to eat lots of fruit and then they it passes through their system very quickly and then they poop it out the other end and uh, what's known as the cloaca uh on and and that of course the seed is still inside they they what they've done is digested the soft fruity parts of it and it passes through now and then of course that helps seed dispersal of the plants that produce those berries and fruits well yeah, and, and the last part of the, the digestive tract we're going to talk about it, it is the cloaca, the end, uh, the end of everything. The um, poop is a favorite topic when you're talking with kid, young kids in the nature center world. So it, we always told them in the nature center world, birds don't do number one and number two. They do mainly want to know what's called, likely related to one and a half because their their kidney uh, and and poop. Whenever they, it's ready to be passed out of the system, mixed together, and so they don't urinate and they don't defecate. They it, they pass it through the cloaca as all together, and it's white typically from the uric acid, and it's we call it whitewash. 
And then uh, that's the poop you're seeing on your deck. And if they ate something, a berry that's really purple, like robins, you'll see purple in it and things like that. And so that that's where it gets passed out of. So birds don't do number one and number two. They do one and a half. It all comes out there together. And it's very liquefied. Uh, and, when, and, and you've had it on your car, I'm sure. So the digestive systems of birds, very, very cool topic. Um, and you guys likely eat gizzards uh, if you it, from the grocery store, and those are chicken gizzards, uh, and, uh, and I actually like them. So they're fried up, but that's a very muscular structure, the second part of the stuff. It's a great idea for a program. It's always fun to learn more about the in internal workings of animals like that. They're going to see how they're different from us. So remember, their, their first part of their stomach is more like ours, and then the gizzard is very, very unique. They're more like our molars. So it's a great idea for a program. I hope you liked it. If you do, give us a like, give us a share. Until next time, let's talk birds.